Hey, hey, hello, I'm Kråkan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Closet Movie Rambles, where I talk about movies that I found in my closet while cleaning. This week's movie is Return to the Bat Cave, and it's an action superhero comedy from 2003, starring Adam West and Burke Ward. And the movie starts with Adam West in his mansion, uh, watching a, a Batman movie. So there's kind of some kind of meta humor going on. And there's this a sneaky kind of character outside that uh, leaves uh, a letter, an invitation on his doorstep, doorstep and he rings the bell and Adam goes to check it out, what what, what this is all about. And he find, find out, he picks up the invitation and he, and he calls for Alfred and uh, this supposed Alfred character arrives and it's not the Alfred from the Batman movies, it's actually a butler but it's called, he's called Jerry. And Jerry's upset that after all these years Adam has still learned his name. Uh, so that, that's kind of funny. But anyway, Adam takes the uh, fire escape, this which this like metal rod, and he slides down to the garage, and he uh, gets his keys for his Ferrari, and he leaves for this charity event, which uh, involves uh, some Batman memorabilia and some orphans and, and whatnot. And while there, the actor of Robin from the the old movies, and I should probably say this that. These are the original actors from the 60s movies. Uh, they're basically, basically playing themselves. So Burke Ward, the, the guy who played Young Robin in the 60s movie, he's arguing with the hostess like about he why, why am I why am I not on the list? Why am I not not invited? I got this invitation and whatnot. And this invitation is a matter of fact. Uh, a fake, a trick to get both Adam West and Burke to this place so they can witness something. And um, Adam arrives and the hostess is kind of struck by uh, by the presence of Adam because apparently he's like a womanizer and apparently all, all girls like him for some reason. And the Batmobile is there. So they get into the Batmobile and uh, Adam West tells Bert not to push any buttons, but of course she does. And and they, there's like an old oil slick that shoot out the back and all these nice guests with nice costumes like tuxedos and whatnot get get stained in their dresses and and they, they get out of the car. And Adam West reveals that he kept a souvenir, like a memorabilia, to remember the end of the show. He, he basically kept the key for the for the Batmobile. That's what he did. And then um, they, they exit the car. And then the light goes black. The, the light goes out. And then the Batmobile is gone. And uh, instead of calling the police, and there's this funny scene where they say, like, D does anyone have a cell phone? Everybody's like, get their hands out, and they have their own cell phones. Uh, and it's like, okay, no, we're not going to call the police, says Adam. We're going to take this on by, by ourselves. And what basically happens then is that they take chase after this uh, Batmobile. They follow the tracks, basically. So Adam and Burke gets outside and they, they, they get the car and they ask a porter like where did the Batmobile go and they get directions. And this is a reoccurring joke that always happens uh, throughout the movie is that uh, the porter wants tips because, because he, he kept the car for him basically. And uh, Adam says to Burke, um, you know, tip the man and that's what he has to do. And they get in the car and there was this clue in this previous scene. Like, what does an elephant never do? And then an elephant never forgets. That's the saying anyway. So they have to go back and think about their earlier career. And that's the whole point of this movie. Going back to the 60s Batman to figure out who the villain is or who stole the car for what purpose. So they uh, they think back on it while driving. And Adam thinks back on his earlier Batman career or before the time he played Batman in the 60s uh, Batman series movie. And Bert, and he, he remarks that uh, Bert's life was indeed always this simple, cutting to a scene where, in the past, where Bert and Bert and his girlfriend is picking up bottles on the beach just to make dinner for the day. They're basically recycling bottles. And then cutting to Adam reading the Batman script and laughing at it, and he thinks it, it has potential. Uh, and then cutting to Bert driving to the studio to do his audition, because up to this point, he has not done any acting or anything, 
but he wants to do acting. He doesn't have any prior experience. So there's this joke where he drives up his old beat car to this universal lot or the studio, whatever, and he gets direction to where to go. And the, the kind of like uh, the, the the security car says, "You just drive up there, or whatever. You you, you can't miss it." And the, they open like the boom uh, so he can drive in, but the car is like so bad, so he kind of it jerks off a bit and it goes back. And it, then he kind of push the gas and it goes back forth. And then eventually he gets in, into the lot. Uh, and then uh, he does his first screen test and he reveals to the director that he has not done this stuff before and he's inexperienced, so this is his first test. So he just thought that he would deliver some lines and that would be all, but it's more to it. So he does the screen test where he does some karate. He actually punches uh, wood plates and breaks them, which is kind of impressive. And he does some acrobatics and stuff and he just shows that he is this boy wonder. <sighs> And then cutting to to the desert to the desert where Adam and Burke uh, stop the car and they don't really know where they're they're supposed to be going. And then uh, uh, then cutting to Adam uh, on Adam on set arguing about the, the character of Batman. And this is one of those things that he actually gets right as uh, back in the days, the 60s Batman, like, he argues, like, the, the, the character of Batman should have more depth, you know, he's supposed to be, like, this uh, deep emotional character because he's an orphan, lost his father, mother, and all that, and it, it, this is just the cake, the kind of icing on the cake, like, but it's too much dark stuff, too much information, and the directors kind of want to go another way with the Batman. And then there is a viewing... Uh, the executives so of the studio is viewing some old uh, previous actor uh, and we get to that in the end of this review uh, and it, there's this old actor that played Batman before Adam West and he's kind of doing this kind of more stiffer improv of the actor of Batman and then they compare it to like Adam's screen, screenplay and they realize that Adam does it better and he's, there's something about Adam's character uh, and then cutting to and then they cut to the to the set of the actual bat cave that they made and the, they they make they go around the bat cave both Bert and Adam and they they're amazed about the quality of the set because it's just like the 60s and the, the budget is kind of like it's made of cardboard but it looks good for the standards that are uh, and then Adam breaks the four, four, fourth wall and it's like wait a minute someone was there and then they zoom in on like the 60s footage and it was someone was in the background so someone actually planned this all along from the beginning it's like breaking the fourth wall and then uh, there is a narrating vo voice that tells the plot to move moving on and moving on what they're gonna do and adam says to bert like Did didn't you hear that and bert says like what what are you talking about well it's just me then and then Adam and Burke drives to a sleazy bar because they realize that they've been driving too far and talking too long. So they go to this sleazy bar and um, uh, Burke, Burke goes to the bathroom and Adam goes to the, to the bartender to get some information and some cold drinks. And then the, the, there is this uh, lady in a cowboy hat and they put on some music and she kind of tries to get some information or seduce him or something and they dance. And then uh, actually it's the, the old uh, actress who played Catwoman that's kind of this crazy kind of character. And then, uh, then, then Bert returns from the bathroom and of course he, have to pay, he has to pay for the drinks. But uh, the drinks are got, got like spiced like drug with for the bartender because they're obviously bad guys and this is a sleazy bar and it's all connection to the Batmobile and everything. And then Adam flashes back to the first uh, day they shot the first first scene they shot in the on the Batman movie. And Adam puts put on his costumes and it, he makes it look really easy. And they're they're both in their own separate trailers so they're cutting back and forth. And Adam is putting on his cape and his cowl and. You know the bat, the, the utility belt, and the birth is Bert is like having trouble getting on the boots, and he puts them on wrong, and the cape, and everything goes uh, pretty pretty bad for him. Uh, and then 
the first scene that Bert has with the, the Batmobile is like he, he sits down in the Batmobile and is like uh, calls him Batman but it's this stunt double and Bert kind of asks him where's my stunt double well he's over there with Adam talking drinking coffee and they kind of like wave and they wave back so uh, Bert kind of asks that why why do I need to uh, be be in be in the this car don't I have a stunt double and he's like yeah, you have a stunt double but the camera will be in your face when the car turns so you have to be in frame and uh, kind of Bert kind of says like okay and kind of takes a deep deep breath breath and is and he asks the stunt double like is is this safe it is is this dangerous or something like that and the the stunt double the, uh, then the, the stunt double playing Batman replies like it's only uh, dangerous when it's fun or something and they kind of go for this uh, stunt and he dislocates a finger and then Bert runs uh, and meets the Riddler the actor and they talk and uh, Bert runs from an explosion and he kind of gets hurt he gets shrapnels in him and then Bert uh, they use they uh, there's this kind of scene and they they actually use real dynamite to blow up and it's kind of a funny scene. And then cutting back to the bar, uh, and then uh, Adam talking more about it. This this plot with uh, with Bert, uh, and then cutting to to the past again with Adam and his kids on the beach, and they're just playing, like playing there because he has I think he has two kids, and uh, they play there a lot, and then. Uh, the kid's mom gets to pick him up and so Adam at this point he's been in a relationship he has kids but it's not working out and uh, that that's how things are basically as an actor and he kind of says goodbye to his kids and then they leave and then uh, the narrow uh, narrating voice kicks in again and they kind of explain what's going on and then there's a bar fight uh, and it's kind of a stupid thing because uh, it's it's like one of those 60s Batman movies. They have like these uh, comical uh, words popping up like kapow or smash or bonk and they're all kind of crazy fonts with that and they defeat the bad guys and then <sighs> they they leave and then Bert kind of has to pay for the uh, the uh, the damage they've done so so Bert kind of says like how much do I owe you? And the bartender, which is obviously a bad guy, says like, oh, okay, a couple of hundred should do. And he's in on the whole thing. And I think that's kind of funny because Bert always gets the short end of the stick. And then they go out just as they leave this lazy bar, the Batmobile drives away. But Adam and Bert can't follow because their car has been towed. So they, they figured out the clue. They got this clue earlier in the bar. So they, uh, they need to go to this place, this cinema called The Vista, where their parents here apparently is a showing. And uh, so they, they don't take a car, they take a bus. And on the bus, uh, they, they reminiscence of, there is a flashback yet again, when they watch the first episode of The Batman Show. So there is uh, Adam uh, watching the show alone on his sofa, and then cutting to Bert, watching the movie with, uh, with his girlfriend. And the, the first episode wasn't that, a, that big of a hit breakthrough, basically. And then uh, the, the, later on it takes off and they're on to this signing in full, uh, full costume. And uh, Adam West signs this uh, girl's boob with a permanent marker and that comes into play later in the movie. And then they, the fans get overexcited to see their heroes and they kind of run after them. They, they have to make an escape, basically. Uh, and then there's a, a scene where Robin, the boy wonder, on set obviously, and he has to kiss a girl, and his girlfriend is there, and she's not really comfortable with him kissing another girl, and he, Bert kind of says like, well, it's just a movie set, and it, it will be over, it will be fine. So she watches while he gets kissed, and the director is not, <laughs> obviously not happy with the performance, so he takes take upon take upon take, and eventually he gets really into it, and, she, and when he looks up at, try to see her, see her reaction, she's already gone. Uh, and then Bert talks to uh, Adam about 
that she got upset and everything and they talk it out and he leaves on a motorcycle uh, and Adam goes to see a girl uh, to dine with her basically and he wants more than just food but that's all he gets you just get food and no no womanly company and then then cutting to Batman and Robin climbing a wall and in this this classical gag when there is like uh, it, it's filmed, you, they just tilt the camera so it's like, it looks like a steep angle and they kind of climb but in reality it's like a slope, slope climb so they, they kind of try to sneak up on this house basically or climb it up and then there is this old lady that comes out of the window and says oh what's that rocket, why are you so loud and all that kind of old woman mentality and can't you just be quiet and then she shuts the window and then Adam West character is Batman kind of says okay we have to sneak very quietly and they it's kind of this stupid kind of cringy moment and then you cut back and they tilt the camera and you see all the wires and everything you realize that it's a set I like this it's kind of funny because if it's stupid to watch it must be even more uh, stupid to be an actor trying to reenact that scene and that's kind of funny because people are actually paid to do all that uh, acting like Batman and over top Adam West I think that's funny um, yeah and then and then they cut to uh, Bert has got this new house on the beach and uh, it's basically an upsetting moment because his girlfriend has just left all of his stuff at his new house and they're broken up basically they're breaking up and um, so Adam comes to visit him and uh, and he says like don't spend all your money on your acting because the shows is going really good now now I mean, he re and Bert kind of answers honestly and says like I don't know I never had this much money before I money was always a problem so he kind of spent it on cars and houses and whatnot so he, they go out on the beach and sit there and then there is the they just sit and talk it out and there is these two girls and they say they're that they're biggest fans and they kind of says how big are you how are you and there's like this play of reference on their boobs and whatnot and basically they get some action uh, 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 and then it cuts to uh, to Adam and Bert in real time on the bus and then the, in present time and then the narr narrator voice kind of speaks up and this time Bert can hear it too so there's this like the, the, like the narration on the Batman series there's this narrator at the end of the episode that tells like oh, what will they do now what will happen and so on and then they go to the Vista Cinema and they apparently they are all they're only ones there and they go in and check out and there's the Bat this Batman movie playing but there's something funny about it all the Batman villains are are in it and the, the heroes are kind of cut out it's kind of short and then they reminiscence of that uh, and they, they cut back to them uh, on the real Batman set of the 60s talking to some of the villains uh, the penguin and whatnot and they make some jokes back and forth about utility belts and machine gun umbrellas and stuff and it's kind of a funny scene and that the the actor of penguin actually coughed because he didn't he wasn't used to smoking cigars, which is a thing that actually was real and kind of that crowing kind of bird sound was actually a cigar that made he actually cough for real and he kept it in. And then cutting back to Adam and Bert on, on the on the in the cinema. And then making another uh, flashback to Adam and Bert. Um, on, on the set with Egghead or something this is this villain and then the, the director says cut and there is this egg fight and they kind of throw egg at each other it's kind of a funny scene because it's a food fight basically uh, and then cutting to Adam on a on a diner uh, buying actually buying food for him because they're hungry so Burke looks at the menu because now he doesn't have to pay for it so he can order whatever he wants or whatever and he looks at the menu and he realized that it's all these kind of puns on uh, actors on the movie like Cesar Romero, the guy who played Joker, I think, the Cesar Romero salad and they kind of realize that something is going on. And in the background, the Batmobile is kind of driving off with this villain in it. And then they cut back to 
um, uh, to the director of the movie in the in the sixties again, and they talk about censorship because Batman has this funny line of sneaking in dialogue like there's some tingling in my bat bat belt or something, and it's kind of some of the younger kids doesn't get the joke because they're too young to get it because they're not grown up. Some some older elderly kind of understand the joke, and they basically need to censor out some sh- some stuff that Adam says. And you have to really behave when this show is on television. They can't do, say and do whatever they want. Uh, and then there there is this funny scene where uh, with with Bert, and they realize that he is a he has this problem with with a bulge in his rib. Nether area. It's it's kind of a funny thing. He basically got a big dick, and it shows up on camera. So he has to like uh, take these pills to so he stays small. It's kind of funny, and he he jokes about this with uh, Adam West, and he hope I hope it isn't permanent or something like that. And then there's this other scene with the Riddler. Uh, the actor plays the Riddler in a bar, and he basically talks to. Him, uh, uh, talk talk to Adam West about the whole idea of Batman and Robin actually being gay, and then he kind of mentions the fact that they live in a lowly bat cave, and there there's this old care- caretaker Batman, Bruce Wayne, and this young innocent boy, and they, this kind of this weird funny scene. But if you think about it, it's really like that. And uh, uh, and then there's this other scene where. Uh, they, they kind of discuss life back and forth and then there is this girl that leaves a number uh, to Bert and he kind of goes on the hunch and he goes on it and he wind up with this girl and she's actually a psychopath and when he she leaves she tries to kill him and then she, so, she shows up on set later and it's this really weird kind of chemistry kind of thing uh, and then cutting back to uh, Bert and Adam at dinner again and uh, the waitress kind of tells him that uh, the Batmobile went that way because that was what we were looking for right and they, they kind of realized that okay oh yeah we have to go says Adam and, and the, the waitress kind of says like you don't have to pay for anything and that is that girl that he signed on the boob with his name like Adam West and it's a permanent marker so it hasn't gone away and she kind of thanks her for that, and Bert is kind of like in this like weird situation. He's kind of okay, and then they move on. And then the narrator voice basically tell tells them that they, to find a Batmobile, they have to find the arrows who follow the arrows. Uh, and then cutting back to the '60s again with Adam West in bed with two women, and he kind of gets up and he tells them that the press will arrive at nine or something, and he goes out. Uh, just to the kitchen to get some coffee and then the press is there already and he they're like he's in nothing but his towel or something and and, and he kind of jokingly says okay wasn't it 10 or something and the the kind of camera says 10 10 and it kind of mimics it with his mouth and then the two beautiful uh girls come up from behind him and he's like now he's in a bad spot but he makes the best out of it so he make this joke about it it's like i like to pre- present girl A, girl B, they have names, whatever. And he says, has anyone seen my bat suit? And the, the reporters kind of laugh at it. Because this proven that Batman and Robin isn't really gay, and that's just a play on the, the whole joke of them being gay, I guess. And then, uh, and then there is some arguing uh, between uh, Bert and Adam on set playing Batman and Robin, because uh, Adam has this method of acting that he really doesn't like, and they kind of, they kind of getting on each other's nerves. It's like they've been together through through a couple of shows, and they're like, they know which buttons to push, how to make the other guys angry, like a relationship basically. So they go to each other's trailers, and they kind of act like babies, and there's like this back and forth. Then I won't leave it he if he leaves, and I won't do this if he doesn't, and then they come up with an arrangement, and then they kind of go to the set, and they kind of. Or angry at each other, but then they crack up and it's like, oh, whatever, man, I'm just doing it for the show. And they, they kind of get along. Yeah. Yeah. And then there is the, this girl cast. There's this girl who tries on the role of the Batgirl. And uh, um, 
Adam is watching her perform, making her acrobatic stunts. And he kind of remarks that she's good and everything. And she says that the, direct, the directors have warned me of you because he's basically a womanizer and everything. And uh, <clears throat> he kind of acts it off and he doesn't really act on what she means. But then later cutting to a set and everyone is in full get up and they're sneaking up like this kind of cliche kind of moment to sneak up on the villains or whatever. And he kind of says, stop. And he kind of puts off his arm and she kind of says, and this director says, cut. And what? What's this Adam? He has his hand out and he's actually grabbing her boob and it's this kind of weird, he kind of jokes it off and laughs it up. But it's really inappropriate behavior because they're already in the problem with the censors. Oh, excuse me, a bad publicity is not going to help him. And the show is doing rather poorly at this point. So he, he gets into trouble for that. And then, in, in real time, Bert and Adam finds the Batmobile, and they get it in, and they start it up, and then there's like nerve gas. So they kind of doze off, and the, the car is remotely driven. For some reason, it has this remote kind of device, and it gets driven to the old uh, old Batcave that we use from the movies. Like It's like this cliche kind of thing. It's uh, actually a real place. I think it's in California, I think, where the real bat cave actually is like the entrance they use for filming. And they drive into the bat bat cave. Uh, and they they basically get tied up to this kind of bomb. And uh, and, and then Adam and Bert thinks about the cancellation of the show, basically. And the actors talk, uh, and they see like <sighs> the Riddler leaving with the blueprints. So now the pieces are being, being put together actually. And Catwoman is there too. And then the um, Adam and Burke is confronted by Jerry, the butler from earlier. And he's actually disguised as the actor who played the Riddler, I think. So he wants revenge for actually uh, not getting the attention that Batman got because he's playing the villain. He just wants wants his revenge because he he feels discredited or something and um, and then uh, they set the timer for like three minutes for the bomb to explode and then it's kind of a funny scene like Adam West kind of says it will never work and it, this is a, such a poorly done prop and he kind of knocks on the bomb, bomb and it's like this all made of cardboard and this is funny scene because it's like the Riddler has had all this time to plan his revenge on Adam West. Uh, and he kind of, this is all you made? Is this all you can done? This has been like four years or something. It's this funny scene where like, I, I, and the, the Riddler kind of says, you're not a, and the, Adam says to the Riddler, you're not a real villain, you're an actor. I can stretch, says the Riddler, I, I could be anything. This is funny, weird scene. And they, they, kind, of, they kind of leave in the car. And, and Adam kind of says like, whatever you do, don't press that, that red big button and they kind of drive out. And then uh, what happens is that of course the Riddler has to has this impulsive kind of disorder thing and he has to push the button and he does. And uh, Adam kind of re reveals that he has this other trophy or souvenir that he took from the bat set. It's one of these sharp batarangs and they cut the rope from the um, uh, from the from the bomb, and they try to escape, and there is this big explosion, and uh, Burke's character kind of flies out. Uh, they actually disarm the bomb, but it goes up for whatever reason, and Burke's character flies out of the bat cave, and he lands on his back, and then Adam West just kind of comes out of the smoke unharmed, and Burke says, "What happened to you? What what? Well, how are you unscathed or whatever? I had a stuntman. Oh man, it is this funny running joke." And then the Riddler and Catwoman has been flung from the bat seats of the car because the red button is a launch button for the ejection seat or whatever. So they're up on this high kind of cliff and they can't go down. So what happens is that uh, they basically take the, uh, uh, they call the police this time and actually picks up the actors. So they put the trial for what they've done and they drive the Batmobile back to the the charity event where they leave it and then 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 the narrating voice kicks in at this event this charity event 
and they actually follow up on the voice and I find the, the character who played the Batman in the first before Adam West played him he's called Lyle Wagner or Wagner and he kind of says this funny line like uh, if I would have played Batman like it was intended to then the show wouldn't have been cancelled and he kind of pulls the drapes to go back to narrating do his thing and then again the car gets stolen and this time it's one of the orphanage kind of kids that stole the car and uh, Adam West kind of looks at this arm wash and it says to work them time again and they do like this we have time and they make this famous scene when they run towards the camera and they pause at this one scene is actually in the movie in the old 60s movie, movies, I mean. So what do I think of this movie? Or this uh, flashback kind of retrospect? I think the scenes with the actual flashback scenes played by other actors are really good. Because when they look at them, it actually looks like California in the, in the 50s. Like everything from clothes to glasses to cameras and every, everything, every style decision from the wardrobe department is excellent. It actually looks like the 50s and 60s. And uh, I mean, it's like all the scenes with uh, the present actors of Burt and Adam West are really cringy and really like Hollywood-esque. I guess it's really like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and this is really bad. But when, when they cut back to these scenes, when they try to represent how it was being on set and everything, it's actually really interesting because it you feel the emotion, you feel like you actually were there and every decision with that design is actually really good. So, can I recommend this? Uh, both yes and no. Uh, it's it's really peculiar, really peculiar taste. If you like Batman and the early stuff, you're gonna you're gonna kind of feel nostalgic and look back on this, and you you kind of get like okay. So I'm a li I'm a little bit too young to actually have seen this back on the television, but I find it funny because I'm a, uh, I'm a big Batman fan in general. So I kind of I kind of understood some reference to the old costumes and, and whatnot. But now nah, I, I can't really recommend this if you aren't really a fan. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, take care.